about a year and a half ago, I talked about some of this stuff, whole chapters in the Bible about telling us how we're supposed to do after we're saved. First Peter chapter 2, if you'll look in your Bible, please, there tonight. First Peter chapter number 2. Now, the, the book of First Peter falls into that category of what we call general epistles. And they, for over years, they were called Catholic epistles. Not because the Catholic, like the Catholic Church, but the word Catholic means universal, and it meant universal forever. These epistles were for everybody, like Hebrews, First and Second Peter, First, Second, Third John, Jude, uh, and Revelation. These are com different flavor than Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Romans, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Those are what we call church epistles. Those, those, those. Scriptures were written to a church and for a church. Now, what we do is we rightly divide the Word of God, so we base our church doctrine in the church epistles. That would be Romans to Philemon, and the these what we call Hebrew Christian epistles were these, like First and Second Peter. That's why you feel a little bit different flavor when you get to Hebrews. Like, it's, like, it's like, like the first chapter of Hebrews said, God in these last days has spoken to us by His Son. Well, in the last days 2,000 years ago, I've heard preachers preach it like that. The last days, last 2,000 years. You see, you see the difference? That'll kick in during the tribulation. The book of Hebrews has a flavor of tribulation doctrine in it. And it's always the kingdom's coming. The kingdom coming. That's Hebrew. The book of Hebrews was written to Hebrews. It wasn't written to church. You know, and the minute you say that, people say, well, you can't just chop it up like that and get, you, there's a lot of good stuff in Hebrews. You can get anything that will help you out of Proverbs or Ezekiel. Now, the rule is you can use any verse in the Bible to, for Christian church doctrine as long as it don't contradict one of, the, one of Paul's epistles. That's the general rule. As long as you do that, you'll be all right. In other words, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, devotional stuff and a lot of moral stuff that you can get out of Leviticus. Uh, you know, and I know people say, well, no, everything in the Bible is to us. No, everything in the Bible ain't to you. Everything in the Bible is for you. If everything in the Bible is to you, we'd still have to bring animal sacrifices and we still couldn't eat pork chops. Uh, but everything in the Bible is not to us. Everything in the Bible is for us. And we learn how to rightly divide it. Anyway, 1 Peter is one of those books. But it's definitely got Christian stuff in it and church stuff in it. And this is it. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and evil speakings, as newborn babes, newborn baby Christians, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, hold your finger there just a second. That's all I'm going to read. Hold your finger there just a second. That verse said, a Christian is like a newborn baby. Everybody here has had a baby, not had a baby, but had a baby in your family. Uh, um, everybody here has been around a baby. And you know, a baby desires milk. If a baby does not desire milk, something wrong with it. It's sick. It's bad off. It won't even live if it don't do, uh, drink, have milk. And so the Bible said, you are like a little baby when you first get saved. All you young people, I mean, you're like a little baby. You're a little baby Christian, and you desire the sincere milk of the Word. Now, there's, uh, there's five things there in verse 1 that it tells you that you should learn how to do or not do or avoid to grow as a Christian. And I'm just going to name them five things off tonight, and we'll go. It won't be long at all, so look at it. Look at it. Number one, malice. Number two, guile. Number three, hypocrisies. Number four, envies. And number five, evil speaking. Look at that first one, malice. Now you say, well, Brother Danny, I don't even know what malice is. Well, how are you going to lay it aside if you don't know what it is? Yeah, you look it up. That's what your dictionary is for. Uh, you can look it up. Read your Bible. It's easy to figure out. 
Malice is a spirit of ill will. In other words, it's being glad when something happens to somebody that you don't like. Now, only a baby, immature Christian would do that. According to that, we've got a lot of people that are very immature in churches and in politics and in sports and in where you work. I'm telling you, we got a bunch of grown babies, grown babies. In other words, if there's somebody that you don't like and something bad happens to them, you know, maybe they have a car wreck or something, you say, ha, ha. Yeah, I'm glad they got what they did. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That, that's malice. That's malice. And we're not supposed to feel like that. We're not, we're, we're, the Bible said in malice be children. Uh, but in Proverbs 20 and verse 22, uh, don't say I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord. The Bible said in Colossians 3 and verse 8, put off all these, malice. The Bible said in Titus chapter 3 and verse 3, living in malice. Causing people trouble, stirring up trouble, glad when somebody else has a misfortune, stirring up trouble. I, I don't, um, as you know, I don't, ha I don't have a nose book, but I know most of you do, and I'm not saying it's a sin to have it, uh, but it is a sin to use it wrong, just like anything else. And as uh, long as you use it right, go, go ahead, help yourself. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I've... Uh, People send me stuff, and I get it on my phone, you know, and I, somebody will send me something, and it'll be from some girl somewhere that's mad at some other girl because she stole her boyfriend or something like that, and she'll write this big, long thing, write this big, long thing, and it'll say, I hope that you die in your sleep, you know. You know who you are, you know, and, and all of her four friends can see that. And uh, she and she puts it on there, you know, and just bad things, uh, you know, bad things. You know, and I thought, it'd be like, uh, it'd be like if, if, if Jeff done me wrong or something like that, and uh, I ain't got enough guts to go talk to him man to man, but I, and I put something on there and say, you know who you are. Uh, you wear these checkered shirts and sit on the front row and all oh, this smiley. You ain't got me fool smiley. Uh, you ain't, uh, I know what kind of person you really are and all of that. And, you know, just, just stuff like that. Look, look, if I've got a problem with him, I need to go say, look, Brother Jeff, I mean, you need to talk about something. We need to pray. Don't involve everybody else. I mean, I mean why do you want to drag everybody? I, I, some, I, I, don't, I don't honestly see how... I don't see the, the benefit of blowing out all your dirty laundry in front of the whole world and telling everybody who you're mad at and telling everybody who you don't like and telling everybody who you do like. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking a stand for the Lord, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. It's personal stuff. Personal stuff. I am, I am shocked at the preachers. 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 If anybody in the, in the church ought to be mature, it's a preacher. And I'm shocked at the preacher. I'm talking about uh, not, not in here, uh, pastors. Other pastors that I met. I heard of one pastor that says, uh, one pastor said, I know that I probably shouldn't even be on Facebook. Conscious about it a little bit. He said, I know that I probably shouldn't even be on it, but I love it. Hey, I love just a walla in the, in the muck. And I said, well, at least you're being honest and confessing it. Uh, and if you didn't love it so much, you wouldn't do it so much. You love it. You love it. And if you're using it for the Lord, fine. But if you're losing it, using it to gouge somebody or put, hurt somebody or, or be mean to somebody or get revenge on somebody or, or hurt or do damage to somebody or hurt hurt somebody's feelings, uh, that's malice. That's malice. That's malice, ladies and gentlemen. That's malice. I have, I have, uh, I travel a lot, you know, meet a lot of preachers, and preachers take me out to eat and stuff like that, and I'm not, I'm not referring to where I just been, but Smokey's a fine man, but I have had preachers take me out, and they'll bait you. Y'all have anybody? They'll bait you. They'll try to get you to take the bait to get you to gossip, and they'll bring up somebody. Well, did you hear about so and so? And I was like, no. Did you hear about? Do you want to hear it? And I said, like, he's a good man. I appreciate it. And I've tried to make it a point. I learned that from Jack Howells a long time ago. 
refuse, refuse to get down in the gutter and, and gossip about somebody. Just refuse it, especially if it's somebody trying to do something for the Lord. They got their faults just like you do, just like I do. We can all find fault with each other, right? I mean, that's the easiest job in the world. It's saying, I don't like this, and I don't agree with that, and he's wrong here, and she's wrong there, and I don't like the way they do this. Well, like that. It's easy. It don't take no talent to find fault. It don't take no talent to be to have malice in your heart. Uh, like that one preacher told, he's fussing with this other preacher, and he said, uh, I guess we'll just agree to disagree. You know, that's what everybody says nowadays. That's a famous little line. We agree to disagree. Um, uh, you, you, you go ahead and, and serve the Lord in, in your way and I'll serve the Lord in his way. That means we agree to disagree, but I'm still right and you're still wrong. That's what that means. And uh, I have preachers try to, they'll try to bait me in and they'll say something like, and I, I said, I'm not stepping in it. I'm not going to step in that. I know what you're trying to do, and I'm not going to do it. And, it, and it, they get frustrated, and we'll talk about something else a few minutes, and they'll bring it back up. Did you hear about brother so-and-so? Uh, what do you think about so-and-so? And -so? And I could name preachers that we all know. Uh, uh, and preachers just yak, 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 yak. And you know what I found out? I found out that a lot of preachers have been pastoring a church for years and years and are still very, very immature when it comes to just, just grow up, man, grow up. Who cares about what brother so-and-so does? Uh, run your race. Get on fire for God. Do something for the Lord. All the, you know what all those preachers need to do? You know all the preachers that are fussing back and forth on Nosebook all the time? I'm not talking about standing for God. I'm talking about just nitpicking each other. Them guys need to go soul winning. They need to get them an armload of tracks and go out in the, in, the, in the neighborhood where they live and knock on some doors, try to find a sinner, try to tell them about the Lord. And that's what some of these old gossiping women need to do too. That's what some of these old gossiping uh, uh, deacons and Sunday school teachers and, and preachers and laymen and choir members and musicians need to do. Just say, uh, and sit a, it's, it's easy to sit around and find fault with somebody. Get out and do something for God and quit spreading malice all over the place. Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Danny. Amen. Well, you remember this. And I preach you used to say when you point your finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at you. That's the truth. That's the truth. That is the truth. Amen. And then that second word is guile. Guile. What does the word guile mean? That's a nasty sounding word, ain't it? It means deceitfulness. It means like the serpent beguiled Eve. Um, uh, the biggest trick to deceive somebody. Uh, give you some example. Bible example is Judas Iscariot. When he came to betray the Lord and he came and he brought all them old wicked people up there that day and he came up and the Lord obviously knew what he was going to do anyway. And the Bible said he come up and kissed him on the cheek. And he backed off like that and he said, now the one that I kiss on the cheek, that's him. Get him. And they grabbed the Lord and took off with him. He betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss. Think about that. He betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss. Have you ever been betrayed with a kiss? <laughs> God, we can tell some stories there, couldn't we? Have you ever been betrayed with a kiss? I'm sure you have. Have you ever had somebody that you thought was true to you and they stabbed you in the back and they turned out and they, Lord, have we all been there? Uh, that's what guile means. That's what to cheat, to trick. Uh, um, the first Peter chapter 2 and verse 22 said, Who did no sin, Jesus, neither was guile found in his mouth. Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, they came in and they, they had this little plot and they had this plan devised up where they was going to come in and they was going to say, uh, we we going to tell the preacher that we're giving all this money to the church and we're really going to keep a bunch of it and we'll make everybody think we're giving it all, but really we're not. Just, just, in other words, just lying to the whole church. Now, it'd be like if you sold, if you sold a, a car for ten thousand dollars, right? Let's just say you sold a car for ten thousand dollars, and you and your wife sit down one night, and you say, "You know what? I'm gonna stand up in church Sunday morning, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them uh, that uh, we sold the car, uh, and we got seven thousand dollars out of it, and we're giving all the money to the church." And they're going to think we're great. And we'll keep that three and we'll go on vacation. And she says, okay. So, preacher comes, he comes in Sunday morning. 
Hallelujah, preacher. Good to see you. Here comes Ananias. Woohoo! I got a testimony. What is it, Brother Ananias? Me and Sapphira, the Lord been dealing with our heart, and we, and we sold our car. All I could get out of it was $7,000. And here's the whole 7000 Oh, I don't know if I can eat, ever eat again. I don't know if we can pay our bills. But we're giving it all to the church for the glory of God. Oh, boy, he poured it on thick. Well, you know, obviously the Lord told Peter what he's doing. He said, Peter said, you're a hypocrite, man. Is that all you got out of that car? Yes. You sure? One last change. How much did you sell that car for? 7,000. Well, he's okay. Bam! Lord killed him just like that right there. Now, now that, there were so many miracles and blessings happening back then. There was judgment happening back then too. See, if the Lord did that now, there'd be dead people in all over Burke County every Sunday morning. That's right. That's right. Making people think you're giving when you really ain't. <laughs> oh, they'd, be, they'd be out in the parking lot and dead, dead preachers and deacons and Sunday school teachers. And, well, the Bible said three hours later, in comes Sapphire. Sashay and Sapphire. And it, that's scriptural proof it takes a woman three hours longer to get ready to go to church than it does a man. Amen. I, I didn't write the Bible. My job is to preach it. Yeah, take it up with the Lord. So here she comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ho, hallelujah. Lord, she had her cotton candy hair dude up there like Jan Crouch. And I mean, tell, I mean it was all in there. And she's painted up like a possum hunter in pokeberry season. I don't know what that means. That's what old preachers used to say. Uh, but anyway, uh, she come in there like that. And she said, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's, my, where's Ananias at? Well, anyway, he said, uh, you, uh, he's done buried, son. He had the corona. She didn't even get to go to his funeral. Uh, but uh, she's sitting there and she said, hey. Hallelujah, preacher. It's just a joy to be here. I have a testimony. He said, I bet I know what your testimony is. It sold your land, didn't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Praise God. Oh, God's so good. Oh, the Lord's. You know, you, you got to watch out people's always talking like that. I'm suspicious of people that's always just, oh, just praise the Lord. It's just, oh, just, yeah. I think mean, they're trying to make you think there's something they're not. I don't mind people being uh, being real, being real, but I'm telling you, I mean, some people, they got too much honey dripping out of their mouth, y'all. Amen. And uh, they, 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 um, they, they, they're like that dog chases me. That little dog, that little guy's got a little chihuahua down there where Chubby lives, you know, down there. His house, that dog ain't that high. When I run down there, I run down there like this right here, and I'm going like that, and I can hear him going, and he comes running up that driveway. I don't even pay him no attention. I can hear him trying to nibble at my, my heels. And he follows that like that. And all of a sudden, I'll just stop and go, ah! And he goes, he goes, rah, 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 rah. He goes running back down like that. I say, Scares him to death. He's big and bad until I turn around and face. That reminds me of people like that. I know preachers like that. It's just, Danny Castle, Danny Castle. Da, 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 da. And then when I see him, I say, how you doing, brother? And I look at him in the eye and I say, well, hey, Brother Castle, how are you? It's good to see you. <laughs> I just back off like that right there. That's guile. Huh? I mean, you know, you ever heard these people that just talk bad about you behind your back? Oh, but when they see it, oh, Lord, they can they turn it on in, boy. I mean, it's just honey dripping down both sides of their mouth. How wonderful you are. As soon as you get going, it's nibbling at your heels. I asked old Fred Potter one time. He had a bunch of uh, guys giving him a hard time. And there's against everything he's for. He wanted to build a building and everything. There's all against it. And I asked him literally, I said, what'd you do about all them men that was against you, preacher? And he said, I outlived them. <laughs> I reckon that's, that's pretty good advice. But uh, uh, they had guile. And you know the story. He said, how much did you get out of that car? She said, $7,000. I know that's a lot of money. But God laid it on our hearts to give it all. And Peter said, now look, it wouldn't really be nothing wrong with you keeping $3,000. Well, 
You didn't have to give none up. You didn't want to. You just said, you tithe. But because you lied, the feet of them that buried your husband will carry you out. You went, down she went, buddy. They had two funerals that day. Two subtractions from the church membership. Bam! Boy, don't you know the rest of them people in that church was, was straight up there for a while? You say, well, why don't God do something like that? We're going so far away from God now, you don't get the miracles or the judgments like that. But it's coming. When it's hot, when it's hot, brother, when the power of God's really moving in the church, you, you, stuff like that happens, good and bad. God. Well, let me say these other three right quick. Hypocrisies. Now, I've done dealt with this. Hypocrisies. That means pretending to do something you're not. Be something you're not. Play actor. Put on a good front. Act like. Um, you know, uh, just put on a front. It's, it's a, if it's a crime to make fake money, it ought to crime to be a fake person. Amen? Uh, that's amazing how, how much religion people get when, uh, when it comes out. I'll tell you a story I read this week, and it had an effect on me. That uh, The guy was working at a summer camp, and he worked with young people and young adults, and this lady come to the preacher. She was a young lady, probably in her 20s, and she was bawling. And she was t- tore up and crying. He said, ma'am, what's wrong? She said, I've just got a lot of stuff I need to get off my chest. And it's bothering me. And, and, uh, and he said, what's that? And she said, she said uh, my father uh, molested me when I was a child. And she said, I've never told nobody. And she said, that's why I got these marks on my arm where I've, tried, I've cut myself, tried to kill myself. And she bawled. She said, I've never told nobody this. But she said, it, it's bothered me all these years and he messed me up. And she said, I'll tell you, the only reason I didn't kill myself. And, uh, and the guy said, why? She said, well, there's a, a preacher at our church. And she said, that preacher, I noticed that every time he'd come to church, he would have his hand on his wife's side. And he said, I've even seen him hug her right in church. And he said, one day, she said, one day, they was going out in the church parking lot, and I watched them. They didn't know I was looking, and there wasn't even nobody in the parking lot. And that preacher opened the door for his wife. And she said, I watched that guy and watched that guy and watched that guy. And she said, you know what? All men ain't like my daddy. And she said, that's the only reason she didn't kill herself, watching that man be real, a Christian. You think it ain't important how we live? You think it don't matter how people see it, how you talk at work? You think it don't matter if you, you, there's people watching you. There's people watching me. There's people watching. They they watch every move. If they know you're a Christian, especially if if you're a preacher, if you especially if you're if you sing in church, or especially if you ever do anything, they watch every move you make. And that girl said that guy gave me hope. Everybody ain't a hypocrite. Everybody ain't a child molester. Everybody ain't what's the stupid Netflix uh, perverted pedophile uh, junk that they put out. Everybody's not like that. Thank God there is some people that are real. Ladies and gentlemen, if this world ever needed to see some real Christians, it is now. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hypocrisies. And then he said envies. And that just means being jealous of each other. Being jealous of each other. People are eat up with it. People are, oh gosh, I mean, I mean, uh, as I said, preachers are jealous. Usually, if you're always talking bad about some somebody, a lot of the times it's because you're jealous of them. I've, I've been pastor a long time. We have somebody come to church. I mean, I've watched it. I've watched it over and over and over. Uh, if if a lady and she's maybe she's attractive, immediately the other one's like, I don't like her. I don't like her. Well, why? I don't know. I just don't. Well, she never done nothing to you. Now some old ugly woman come. She just sweetest thing ever was. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I, I've seen it. Girls, teenage girls. 
in school. Oh, I hate her. I don't like her. I don't like her. wonder why. The Bible said envy. Look, if, you're, if you are secure in who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're being the best you that you can be and you're standing for God, you do not have to be jealous of nobody. Look, I've, I've, I, I'm not, I, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't trade places with nobody in this world. I don't know one person that I'd swap my life for their, and I mean that. I'm not just up here tooting my horn. I'm, I, don't, I mean that. I, you, I ain't got everything uh, perfect. Everything ain't right. I'd change some things if I could about me, my family, my house, everything. But I'll tell you one thing. The way I look at it, God's been mighty good to me. The Lord's been mighty merciful to me. He's been way better to me than what I deserve. I thank God for what I've got. I'm glad I'm Danny. I don't want to be nobody else. I, you be the best you you can be. I'll be the best. I don't want to be you. I, you can't be me. I can't be you. And the, it's, it's babyish. It's childish. For everybody to sit around and talk bad of each other because they're jealous of each other all the time. Childish. Grow up a little bit. Grow up. Few men... Very few men have the character to honor the success of, of somebody in their, their, their peers and, and do it honestly. Very few men can honor another's success, success like if they're in the same business you are or they're the same calling you are. They're the same, like if you're a singer, they're a singer. If you're a, if you're a, a you know, if you're a carpenter, they're a carpenter. If you're, and, and they're doing good and the Lord's blessing them, um, Lord, I, I, built, I built buildings. We built some, I built many buildings and had building programs going on. And every time, ever, every electrician I called says, well, who done this? They didn't know what they was doing. And the others said they didn't know what they, plumbers, uh, uh, the same way. They're like preachers. Every one of them thinks they're right and condemns all the rest of them. Listen, uh, we're, we're not supposed to be envious of each other. And then the last thing I'm going to say that, and it says evil speaking, same thing. I said that lady one time, she come to the preacher, and she'd been talking bad about him all over the community, which I'd be careful if I was you. And I, I, I always told my girls, ask my, ask my daughters, I, they, I've always told them, I said, you don't talk bad about God's man. Ask them. Yeah, but daddy, no, no, there ain't no, yeah, but daddy, nothing. You let the Lord handle him. Teach your kids. I'm not saying that because I'm a preacher. I'm teaching it for your own good. Teach them that leave their mouth off God's men. They do stuff you don't agree with. They do stuff I don't agree with. Leave them alone. The Lord will take care of them. You start messing with them, he'll, the Lord will get you. That's what he did in the Bible. Uh, and, uh, and you know what? That woman came to that preacher and knocked on his door that time. She said, preacher. I just want you to forgive me because I've been talking bad about you. And he said, well, I forgive you, but I want to show you something. And he took a, a, a box of feathers, and the wind was blowing like it was early March, and he threw them feathers up in there like that, and that wind caught them thing, blew them all over the community, out down the house, down the street, down the road. And he said, now, go and pick up all them feathers. She said, that's impossible. I can't go back and find all them little bitty. He said, that's the same way it is about gossip. It's already spread out there somewhere. You can't go back and take back every word you've ever spoke to somebody. You don't just say, well, I'm sorry, and that fixes it. The damage is done. That's why the Bible said, if you can, if you can control your tongue, you can bridle the whole body. That tongue is a world of iniquity, brother. Set on fire of hell. I read this story, and I'll say this, and I'm through. And when it comes time to die, y'all, you're going you're gonna to want to be right. And what I've given you is five little things tonight that me and you should be long past years ago, but it's a disgrace we've been in church all these years and still do stuff like this. But a man down in Atlanta, he'd been out of church and got wicked and got out of church, uh, backslid, and he'd come to church and got right with God. And he said, I'm going to go fix everything. I've, I've done people wrong. I'm going to go fix it. So he went straight down the road and paid a man $100 that he owed him. And then he went to another man's house and paid a bill that he had refused to pay. And then he went and, uh, to another guy and 
ask forgiveness for an argument that they'd got in. And then on his way home, he passed by the graveyard. And he had two boys buried in a drunkard's grave in that graveyard from all the time he was out in sin. And he looked at Tim Tombstone and he said, Great God in heaven, there's something I can't straighten out. There's something I can't straighten out. See, you think you can fool around and stay backslid for a while and then just come straighten out. You'll, you'll do some stuff you can't straighten out. It'll get your kids. God will forgive you. The Lord will forgive you. And you'll, get, you'll reap it in your kids, though, if you ain't careful. God help us. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Come on, Miss Desi. Every head bowed, never eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this evening. Maybe God has spoke to your heart tonight. Maybe the Lord has dealt with you tonight. And while she plays softly, you'd like to slip right out of your seat. Something's already coming. You don't have to tell me what you're praying about. It ain't none of my business. Between you and the Lord, just slide right out of your seat right now. Right now. Come on, Daddy. Oh, Mom, and just get down here and say, all right, Lord, I'm going to deal with this issue. I don't want to be jealous and be a hypocrite and be evil speaking and guile and malice and envy. Lord, help me. That's basic Christian. That's basic baby Christian doctrine, people. That's baby Christian doctrine. That's going to, that's first base. Short of the Lord, we can do that. May God help us tonight. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd bless our church. Thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the way our church likes preaching. Thank you for the way they'll take preaching. And, Lord, I know the people here love your word or they wouldn't be here. And I know that's why they're here. And I pray, God, that you'd bless every single one of them. Bless all these teenagers and young people. Oh, God, Lord, touch somebody's heart, we pray. God, do something real here tonight. Well, thank you for it. Some still praying tonight. We'll wait just a few seconds before we go. God speak to your heart tonight. Amen.